The oracle has spoken, but it was suitably Delphic. Syed Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General of Hezbollah, a military political organization that I have seen given birth and grow to be one of the most effective and the most influential in the world, today addressed an audience of thousands in Lebanon and many millions across the globe, all over the globe. Leaders of governments were drawing up their chairs to hear what Syed Hassan had to say. Some were hoping for a 2006 moment when uh, Syed Hassan asked everyone to go to their windows and look out the window. And at the moment that they all looked out the window, a Hezbollah missile struck an Israeli warship and struck it. Others, and I am one of those others, were hoping that the very possibility of a wider regional war would cause Netanyahu to accept the demands of President Biden and Secretary Blinken for at least a temporary ceasefire so that the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip could be addressed. I'm afraid that the demand of President Biden taken all the way to the Israeli government by Secretary Blinken was contemptuously dismissed by Benjamin Netanyahu, even though the United States is paying for all of this and its military aid to Israel and its military guarantees to Israel are crucial for the survival of the state of Israel, Netanyahu brushed aside their wish under pressure from their own public opinion and world public opinion for a ceasefire. Instead of a ceasefire, two of the most depraved war crimes so far in this conflict took place as Blinken was sitting in Pres uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's room. The first was something that will never be forgotten, the massacre of Rashid Street, where Palestinian refugees fleeing from the north of Gaza to the south of Gaza, as Israel called on them to do repeatedly, and as the supporters of Israel in the world have repeatedly said, why don't you move? Why don't you go to the south? Well, Rashid Street is the road to the south. An Israeli attack on a convoy of Palestinian refugees, it's all there if you want to see it on the footage, was strewn out dead, mutilated, decapitated. Dozens of bodies lying on the road the blood stains smearing the entire highway, cold-blooded mass murder of civilian refugees fleeing in the direction that the murderers told them to flee in. And breaking news, this may not yet fully be understood, but the war crime at the Al-Shifa hospital may be the most unspeakable war crime of the war. Having told people that the Rafah gate into Egypt was available and open for patients in desperate need of medical attention that they could not get in the Al-Shifa hospital or any hospital in the Gaza Strip. 14 of the 26 hospitals have now closed, stopped operating because they have no electricity, no fuel, no water, no food, and no medicine. These patients loaded into ambulances, and as they were headed out of the gate of the Al-Shifa hospital, heading for Rafa and safety in Egypt, they were bombed in the most savage attack possible to imagine. Ambulances at the gate of a hospital destroyed into pieces of blood-stained flesh. I haven't seen all the footage, but the footage I have seen is something that I will never forget. And only watch it if you have very, very strong fortitude and a strong stomach. That was Netanyahu's answer to Blinken's call 
from President Biden for a ceasefire. Ceasefire? No, we are going to increase the fire. Anyway, Syed Hassan went through the conflict, its origins, and where it might be headed. He was Delphic, of course, because if he declared war there, Israel would have bombed the thousands of people who'd come to hear him speak. So it was foolish to imagine there was going to be a significant declaration of what comes next there and then at that event. It's quite clear, though, that Hezbollah has already entered the war. There's no need for a declaration of that. Both sides, Israel and Hezbollah, have dozens of martyrs already in the military clashes between them. But what Nasrallah said was that if the bombing of civilians continues, then not only Hezbollah, but other actors in the region, Arab and non-Arab, would ineluctably be drawn into the conflict because their public cannot tolerate seeing the savagery being meted out to unarmed and defenseless civilians, most of them children and women. 65% of all those killed in Gaza in the last less than one month are women and children, and almost half of them are children, babies, toddlers, sucklings, as Netanyahu put it in his statement the other day. They're massacring the innocents. It's the slaughter of the innocents. And Nasrallah said that we cannot stand by. So look out for a significant increase in the number of attacks, but not just on Israeli targets. Nasrallah spent the most important part of his speech of fixing fairly, squarely, the United States right in the center of this picture. As a matter of fact, he blames the United States even more than he blames Israel. He believes, and this he shares with President Putin, who said the same thing earlier in the week, the United States is roaming around the world, creating chaos, mayhem, murder, bloodshed, instability everywhere in the world. And Nasrallah said the same thing. And he pointed out to President Biden, all your naval ships sitting offshore in the eastern Mediterranean don't frighten us. They never have frightened us and they don't frighten us now. And we have plans, he said, to deal with your naval assets sitting on the shores of the Mediterranean. And you'd be a fool, President Biden, if you didn't believe him, because one thing that characterizes Nasrallah, as compared with some, maybe many other leaders in the Arab world, when Nasrallah says something, he does it. When he tells you to go and look out the window, be sure you're going to see something. On the Mother of All talk shows, on Sunday at 7 p.m. UK time, we have a star-studded lineup of guests. First of all, the one and the only, Professor Norman Finkelstein. I don't need to uh, build him up to you. Finkelstein is the brightest star in a very bright firmament of Jews, particularly American Jews, who have found the courage, the strength, and the fluency to challenge Israel's fake narrative that somehow they are committing these crimes on behalf of the Jewish people, on behalf of the Jewish religion. We've got the Honorable Craig Murray, former British ambassador, talking, yes, about Gaza, but talking about why Britain is fundamentally responsible for this crisis. Because 106 years ago, this very month, in the Balfour Declaration, Britain promised, on behalf of one people, to a second people, the land that belonged to a third people. 
namely the people of Palestine. And Dan Cohen, probably the most experienced and most brilliant and articulate American Jewish journalists who spent more time in Gaza, more time in Palestine than any other American journalist that is at the front line writing and reporting and broadcasting today. Dan Cohen, the Honorable Craig Murray, the one and only Professor Norman Finkelstein. On Sunday, 7 p.m. UK time, it's the mother of all talk shows.